Hi, this is David Hardesty, and in this lecture, we continue our study of state income taxation of electronic commerce with a discussion of the basics of the allocation and apportionment of income. The objectives of this lecture are to learn the difference between the allocation of income and the apportionment of income, understand the basics of three-factor apportionment, understand the basics of single-factor apportionment, and learn the basic theories of assigning receipts to states. Let's begin by looking briefly at the allocation of non-business income. To allocate income means that a specific item of income is taxed only to one state. That is, the income is not apportioned among the several states in which the company does business, but instead the business is taxed on that income in the state to which the income relates. In general, non-business income or non-operating income is allocated to states. Such income includes rents from realty or tangible personal property, capital gains, interest, dividends, and patent or copyright royalties. Income from intangibles that is not related to the taxpayer's regular trade or business operations is usually taxed in the state in which the company has its commercial domicile. Non-business income from property, such as rents and royalties, uh, is usually taxed in the state in which the property is located. Now let's look at the apportionment of business income, which is the focus, main focus of this lecture. Business income, which generally means income derived from active business operations, is apportioned by formula when the income is earned in more than one state. The apportionment formula is derived from one or more factors. These factors result in percentages of income being taxed in each state in which the company has state income tax nexus. The percentage derived by formula is applied to the net apportionable income of the business. The percentage is not applied to allocable income. Some states employ a three-factor formula to apportion income. Three-factor apportionment uses receipts, payroll, and property. These three factors are combined to create a single percentage for each state, which represents that state's share of net income. In this example, we show state A only amounts and total amounts. That is, in the state A column, we show receipts, payroll, and property assigned only to state A. And in the total column, we show these amounts for all states. In this example, state A receipts are $100, total receipts are $1,000, state A payroll is $50, total payroll is $200, state A property is $25, and total property is $150. First, we're going to show the calculation for an equal weight state where all three factors are weighted equally. In this example, state A receipts are 10% of total receipts, payroll is 25% of total payroll, and property is 16.7% of total property. We total these three percentages to get 51.7%. We divide this amount by three for an equal weight state and get 17.2% which is the amount of net income that will be apportioned and taxed in a state A. Now we turn to a state that double weights receipts. The first thing we do is add an extra line for receipts. Then we calculate the total percentages as before. Next, weight, next we divide this amount by four, since we have four lines of percentages. This gives us a state A apportionment factor of 15.4%. Here are the two separate calculations side by side. 
States vary considerably as to whether they single weight or double weight receipts. Some states even triple or quadruple weights the sales factor. You need to go to the individual state tax returns to find out what uh, formula they use. Now let's talk about single factor apportionment, which is gaining popularity. The majority of states use only single factor to determine the percentage of net income that must be apportioned to a state. Ordinarily, the factor used is the receipts factor. And the example on the previous slide, um, state A's receipts factor was 10%. If state A was a single factor state using receipts, then the uh, state apportionment percentage would be 10%. States use single factor formula apportionment as a way of encouraging companies to locate in a state. An online seller benefits from locating in a state that emphasizes receipts, either by double weighting receipts or using a single factor formula. This is because with most of the receipts being assigned to other states, because most of its sales are to other states, the company's state apportionment formula will be relatively small in its home state. As we will find in the next two lectures, the assignment of sales to states for purposes of the receipts factor in apportionment formulas can be challenging. Let's introduce the issues. Receipts from sales of tangible personal property are generally assigned to those states to which the products are delivered when calculating the receipts factor. For example, if a seller is located in state A, ships $100 of tangible personal property to state A, and $900 of tangible personal property to other states, it has total receipts of $1,000, and the receipts factor in state A will be 10%. As an exception to the above rule, if a seller is not taxable in a state to which tangible personal property is shipped, then the receipts may be assigned to the state from which the tangible personal property is shipped if that state uses a throwback rule. For example, if tangible personal property is shipped from state A to state B, and if state A uses a throwback rule, then state A will assign those receipts to state A if the seller is not taxable in state B. In some states, Receipts of sales of tangible personal property are assigned to the state where the income producing activities take place. For example, Webco has all of its activities, including its web server in state A and sells online services. Because all of the activities associated with the receipts from sales of online services take place in state A, all of the receipts are assigned to that state, regardless of where customers are located. The majority of states, however, assign receipts from sales of other than tangible personal property to the states where customers are located. Such states are referred to as market states, and the assignment of receipts in this manner is referred to as market state assignment or market state sourcing of receipts. As a last issue in this overview of the allocation and apportionment of, of income, let's discuss equitable apportionment. If a state's normal apportionment rules do not result in fair representation of the degree of a company's business activities in the state, the state may require or the taxpayer may request use of equitable apportionment. Under equitable apportionment, the taxpayer uses an apportionment formula that is, does not follow standard apportionment. For example, under equitable apportionment, the formula used to apportion income may omit one or more factors if the inclusion of those factors serves to distort the apportionment of income. 